This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. 13 Homeless After Mobe Fire Five children are among 13 people now homeless following a fire along Perry Street in Montego Bay on Friday evening. Reports are that a two-story building that houses a number of different tenants went up in flames, sending plumes of smoke over sections of the resort city. Residents who were present managed to save a few of their belongings despite the threat of the fire. There are no reports of any injuries. Firefighters report that they received a call about 6.12 p.m. and responded with three units from the Barnett Street Fire Station. They reported that upon arrival, they found the building engulfed. They managed to douse the flames before the fire could further spread. Fire investigators were dispatched to the scene, but so far, the cause of the blaze is still undetermined. The loss is estimated at $20 million, and the building was not insured. Would-be victim kills a gunman in Berry Hill Police are probing Thursday night's fatal stabbing of an alleged gunman by his victim in Berry Hill near Newport in Manchester. According to the police, about 8.45 p.m., two men, one armed with a knife and the other with a firearm, approached a group of people in a shop and robbed the shop's owner and an employee of electronics, alcohol, and cash. It is understood that the man who was armed with a gun forced the shop owner to his house, which is close to the shop, and demanded more money. The shop owner, however, reportedly resisted, and a struggle ensued. The robber was subsequently stabbed. He was taken to hospital where he was pronounced dead. The deceased is of brown complexion, about 183 centimeters or 6 feet long, and believed to be in his 30s, clad in a blue shirt, black jeans, and a brown clerk's shoes. His identity has not been released. His accomplice reportedly escaped. Police said that they seized several items at the scene, including one ratchet knife and a Taurus 9mm pistol with five 9mm rounds. Pay cops more to get them out of squatter settlements. Policemen and women who live in squatter settlements have not found a favor with Jamaica Police Federation Chairman Corporal Rohan James and the Commissioner of Police Major General Anthony Anderson due to the high level of crime in these areas. Corporal James, in an interview with the news, said members of the police force and their families can easily become targets, adding that in order to protect their families, they would have to turn a blind eye to criminal activities which would compromise their positions as law enforcers. Simply put, once you are in certain neighborhoods, your safety and the safety of your family is what lies at the forefront of one's thinking. Consequently, it cannot be that you are going to be effective in an environment where criminals walk around with high-powered weapons, said James. A number of squatter settlements have over the years been a major breeding ground for criminals. According to James, members of the force living in these less-than-desired communities underscores the need for them to be properly remunerated for the risky and important jobs they signed up for. Proper remuneration, he added, would give them power to find upstanding communities in which to reside. The issue of police living in informal settlements lends itself to the officer not being effective enough to carry out his or her core functions because they are being placed in a compromising position. That is why it is incumbent that the state remunerates the police officers that they can live in a proper environment. They need to be able to effectively carry out their task without being compromised, said James. Corporal James, when asked, said he had no information on police being recruited into gangs because of the informal settlements in which they reside. Police Commissioner Anderson, in a press conference earlier this week, said it is undesirable for any of his staff to be squatting. Anderson said some traditional squatter communities have been regularized but stressed that the solution to the problem of squatting can be found in long-standing calls for the state to pay its agents well. Police officers should be paid sufficiently that they do not have to find themselves living in a squatter settlement, Anderson said. After a relentless campaign by Jamaica Police Federation, the Supreme Court recently ruled that by March 31, 2023, the government must implement a proper software system to ensure proper and accurate calculations are made to capture and calculate well-overdue payments for overtime since 2008.
Minister of Finance and the Public Service Dr. Nigel Clark subsequently indicated that government is committed to comply with the orders of the court and said the administration, through the Ministry of National Security, has started the process of procuring the system for capturing accurately the hours worked by the police. Holness calls for greater collaboration among countries amid global shortages. Amid concerns about global shortages, Prime Minister Andrew Holness has called for greater cooperation among countries in the Americas to ensure the region's food and energy security. Addressing the ninth summit of the Americas in Los Angeles in the United States on Friday, Mr. Holness reminded countries of the proposal from the first summit in 1994 to establish a free trade area of the Americas. He said while the plan failed for various reasons, the world was now at a pivotal moment and it would be a missed opportunity if the summit was not used to announce a new blueprint for regional cooperation. Jamaica is keenly interested in a successful outcome to this summit, particularly with emphasis on the following areas, food and energy security. The Americas have access to an abundance of agricultural supplies, as well as renewable and other energy sources. We need greater intra-regional technical cooperation, trade and finance to harness these resources to make our hemisphere less vulnerable to global supply disruptions. Several countries in the region, like Jamaica, face a skills gap which could become a binding constraint on our growth horizon. The region needs a thoughtful and coordinated approach in facilitating massive investments in human capital development while at the same time pursuing near-shore policies to bring jobs to workers in their home countries. The COVID-19 pandemic demonstrated our interconnectedness and our interdependence and that no one is safe until we are all safe. This kind of inclusive approach is critical to meeting our challenges and we regret that the summit did not involve all the countries of the Americas. The action plans on democratic governance, digital transformation, our green future, equitable, sustainable, and renewable energy and health resilience should be predicated on the participation of the entire region while reaffirming our democratic principles. Bunting scoffs at a proposal for police to meet with the gangsters. Opposition spokesman on national security is Senator Peter Bunting, says the proposal for the police to meet with the gang leaders to look at ways to curb crime is sending a bad signal to the country. He was responding to the suggestion from State Minister in the Ministry of Local Government, Homer Davis. Senator Bunting on Friday said he would not support a meeting with gang leaders as it will, among other things, make the police appear weak. He insisted it was neither the role of the police nor ministers of government to be bringing that sort of legitimacy and acknowledging the power and the leadership of criminal organizations. Apart from signaling weakness, Senator Bunting believes such a move would suggest you don't have the capacity to do the investigations, bring the cases through the criminal justice system, and to put these men behind the bars. National Security Minister Dr. Harris Chang has rejected Mr. Davis's proposal, declaring that the government would not sit with the criminals. Similarly, the police have already shut down the suggestion, saying there is no room for negotiation with the criminals. However, Justice Minister Delroy Chuck has backed the idea. He believes that if the negotiations are properly organized, they can be effective. Minister's statement on new bail act being misinterpreted, says Chalk. Justice Minister Delroy Chalk has come to the defense of legal and constitutional affairs Minister Marlene Malahu Ford amid a public concern about the new bail act and the implications for persons charged with certain crimes. Mrs. Malahu Ford has hinted that the updated legislation will deny bail for persons charged with murder and gun crimes. But Mr. Chuck says that Mrs. Malhu Ford's statement during the sectorial debate this week is being misinterpreted by some members of the public, affirming that a bail is a constitutional right 
The Justice Minister reiterated, for a bill to be denied, you must have good evidence to show why it should be denied. However, he pointed out quickly that Mrs. Malahu Ford had said the discretion will not be taken from the judge. Mr. Chuck on Friday disclosed that the provisions of the new bail act have not been finalized as the content of it is still being discussed. Two BB Coke High students charged after knife fight. The two BB Coke High School students who used the knives to stab each other outside the institution this week has been charged with unlawful wounding. Superintendent Dwight Daly, head of the St. Elizabeth Police Division, told the news that the students, who are both males, are scheduled to appear in the Santa Cruz Children's Court on June 17. He said that the boys, who are 15 and 16 years old, were charged on Thursday night. In a viral video, the two students were seen stabbing each other during a brawl in Junction shortly after 3 o'clock Wednesday afternoon. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.